Hey, I'm Casey Bryant with All on Georgia here with Coach Charles Hammond, celebrating a little bit after his big win. Chattooga beat Ridgeland this weekend, a 4A school. And could you tell us just a little bit about this group of young kids you've got on this football team this year? Uh, they're super. They're, they're a lot of fun. I started out with them uh, in the seventh and eighth grade in the middle school and luckily came over and they're the same kids and we've been together now for three or four years. And, you know, when you get a new coach, stability means a lot. Well, you know, looking back, I think that, you know, we're playing really, really good football right now a lot earlier than what I thought. But then I get looking back at it, you know, I've been with those guys for three or four years, not just one or two. So, yeah, I'm proud of them. They're a lot of fun. And that relationship development makes yes, a big difference. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. So the game was tied up zero to zero going into halftime. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your defense's performance? Well, we missed a lot of tackles, and they broke a lot of tackles. But we were able to keep them out of the end zone from just playing hard. We'd miss two or three, and they'd break two or three, and then somebody would get him down and make them snap it again. And they played extremely well. Uh, we went in after the first quarter, 0-0. Zero, zero, I thought we got a chance. We went in at halftime, 0-0, zero, zero, and I knew we had a chance. And kind of pepped them up a little bit there at halftime. And we went through the third quarter and shot ourselves in the foot a couple of times. Then the fourth, I think the longer the game went on, the better we got. So. Uh, yeah, the, as far as the defense's performance, I couldn't ask for anything better out of them. Tell us a little bit about the mood that was in the locker room at halftime and what you told the players. Well, I'm not going to go as far as what I told them. Uh, the, you know, they, there was a lot of things that got said at, at halftime Friday night. But, you know, it's every dynasty starts somewhere, and you can always look back and see what, you know, the night it started. I told them that about the Fort Payne game, and you can actually see when a, when a good run or a dynasty football team over four or five years, you, you can see the downfall of it. And I told the kids, I said, let this be the start. You know, you, you, you've got to start somewhere. So they've uh, kind of took that ball and run with it, and they go wide open at practice, and they're all here 100 percent practice. And our coaching staff does a super job of, you know, they put in a lot of hours. People don't realize that, you know, Friday may have been a, a 19, 20 hour day for some of them, you know. A lot of folks say, well, you, you got it made. You're teaching school and coaching high school football. You ought to have to work like me. And there's not many folks put in 20 hours a day after putting in 60, 65 through the week. So, you know, they're all dedicated to trying to get this thing turned, and our kids are. And right now we're 1-0, and and we're just going to kind of ride it and try to get better after watching tape. Uh, there's a lot of areas that we can get better at. You know, today's not going to be one of those hoopla, we just beat Ridgeland days, it's going to be more of those get after their tail and try to fix where we messed up at days. So it definitely seems like some of the conditioning that y'all did during the off season, the weight training, everything that you implemented during the summer for these kids really came through in this game. I think so. Uh, we, we really thought early, uh, you know, before our two scrimmages that we were just in horrible shape, horrible shape. And we up the running and up the running, you was going to have some kids play both ways. And, after watching Friday night, I felt like we were in pretty good shape. You know, as the game went on, we got a little better and a little better. And had a lot of kids play both sides of the football and, and make plays on both sides of the football. So 34 points were scored in the fourth quarter after a 0-0 game. Can you tell us a little bit about the ups and downs as a coach? Well, it was nerve-wracking. It made for uh, fun, I guess, for the fans to watch and, and nerve-wracking for, for the coaching staff. We, we kind of got started and finally finished a drive early in the fourth that we'd been needing to do all night because we'd had two or three of them that were real close and just shot ourselves in the foot. And we finished the drive and turned around and kicked off and the kid fumbled the kickoff and we got on it and a couple of maybe the next player a couple of plays later we put it in the end zone to go up and we missed our PAT which is you know that's something that we really really got to work on but uh, went up 13 nothing and we kind of played a little bit of prevent and, and they punched one in made it 13-7 and then uh, we end up getting the pick from Tyler on the next series to make it 20. We got our two-point conversion, make it 21-7. Then we really got in a prevent to try to make them snap it as many times as they could. We took a D lineman out and put a secondary player in, and they kind of called us in that. They seen that we only had three D linemen. They went and they've got some very good running backs, so they thought they could just run it down there, and they did. You know, but it took them three minutes to get it down there. So really, that put the game to where all we had to do is get on the onside kick and, and kind of ice the clock. And, that was the end of it. So, yeah, it was an exciting fourth quarter. How about ranking this win with all the wins that you've had in your coaching career? Well, this one's at the top. This one's, you know, the Fort Payne uh, game was pro was probably at the top, even though it was a scrimmage. But Friday night's at the top. You know, you don't – people don't realize, you know, kind of what we did. Uh, and hats off to Ridgeland, they're still Ridgeland. But, you know, if you had to go name 
five of the top five programs north of Atlanta uh, in the last five years. Ridgeland would have to be right there. You know, they've got a slew of running backs. They've uh, 1,500 kids in the school. I can go on and on and on. Great coaching staff, new coach, uh, a lot of a lot of energy, and uh, so it's it's a chore to go into to Ridgeland territory and come away with a win, and that's uh, that's saying a lot about our kids. Can you give us a little preview on North Murray? Some of the things you're going to be working on this week before you face them. Well, we've got to fix some of our mistakes from last weekend. We've got to do a better job of getting off the of football at the line of scrimmage and staying fit finishing blocks and, and knowing our assignments. We've got to do a little better job of tackling what we did last week, but you know, we don't have a we don't have an easy week on our schedule. North Murray comes in here with a, a football team that beat us last year, uh, a new school, a new turf field, uh, a lot of numbers, uh, a little bigger school, and so we're going to have our, our hands full. Uh, they're coming here to try to, I guess, bust our bubble. But uh, we've got to do a lot of work this week to prepare for them. They've got a very good football team. I know people probably get tired of hearing me say that, well, the next upcoming opponent's very good, very good. But they really are. Right. You know, they, they really are a good, solid football team. They're probably 280 across the front on offense. Don't play many kids if anybody both plays. And they'll probably dress 70 kids. And they've got a good football team. Good football team. So we've got a lot of work to do. Thank you.